Hello, this is Gamesmatic, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to another pickup video. And I think this is number thirteen um, on the list. So um, yeah, um, I've done one of these for about four weeks, so I thought I'd hop on the old tube and uh, do another pickup video. And I've got a bit of a mixed bag of stuff here today. Um, quite a few of them related to one particular thing, but you know, various games from various systems, and um, yeah, quite a lot to get through. So let's crack on with it. Uh, we'll start off with a little bit of a story. Went into a cash converters um, the other day, well, a couple of weeks ago. I say the other day, but it was about a fortnight ago. I was buying a game, and the guy behind the counter just gave me something and said, Oh, you can have this. Uh, he noticed I was buying some PlayStation 3 stuff. Um, it happened to be move related. I was actually buying this, which was a PlayStation Move nunchuck. And he gave me this thing, which uh, looks like a big plastic gun with a hole in the end of it, but what it actually is, it's for your move to make it a light gun. You just kind of undo this, pop this in the end there, like, I'll say like so, like that. That goes down and then it makes it like a light gun so um, I thought I'd have a look at some more move titles um, the move was like a bit of a flop really wasn't it um, it came out sort of a roundly sort of the dying throws of the Nintendo Wii and um, it was kind of PlayStation's answer to the Wii or Kinect but it didn't do very well and um, there's not that many games for it but what games there are for it are really, really cheap. Uh, I mean, you're talking a quid, two quid. They're really cheap to pick up. So I thought I'd pick some up. So the first one I picked up was this. This was two pound forty nine in CEX, brand new. And I mean brand new. It was sealed in the box. And that is Book of Spells, which is kind of a cast off from Harry Potter. Now I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan, but this in just looked interesting, and I like the kind of um, augmented reality stuff you know and it's all sorts of making you know obviously um, xbox are bringing out their glasses that are supposed to be all augmented reality and this is kind of an early version of that so um yeah this was two pound 49 and basically you kind of get a book with it which uh, you open up as you can see on the back there put, put, you kind of open it up and spells come out the book and things come out the book and pictures come out the book and um yeah, it's really quite um, sort of interesting. Let really me focus that, but yeah, it was two pound forty nine, so it was a bargain. And I picked up quite a few other move games, like I say, because they're really cheap at the moment. So I'll just go through some of the ones that I've got. Um, I picked up Sorcery, which is kind of an action. Well, sort of an action. Adventure game, yeah, adventure game. I'd say he plays this young sorcerer lad, and you use the PlayStation Move to wave um, your wand and cast various spells. And it's really quite effective. It works really well, and it's quite a fun. Excuse me, it's quite a fun game to play. Another game that I picked up was Medieval Moves, which is very loosely based on the original medieval games, only in the sense that everything, every, all the people on it are skeletons. Other than that, I couldn't really see any relation to the original games. But it is a fun game to play. It's like an on-rail shooter, but it's not really a shooter. Because you've got a sword in it, so of course you're slashing with your sword. But also you've got a bow and arrow in it. And to kind of shoot a, an arrow, you've kind of got to reach behind you, get the arrow out. And put your arm in front like that, and then it becomes the bow. And then you aim, and then fire. And, um, yeah, it's quite good. Um, when I, I stuck it on and to have a quick go of it, like you do, and I ended up playing it for about four hours. So, yeah, it was quite interesting. I couldn't kind of stop it. So, <laughs> it's relentless. I tell you what, my arm was killing me afterwards as well, all that kind of, yeah, motion. So, uh, another one I picked up, which isn't a move ex um, only. You can actually play this game with a controller. And this is one of the best ones, is Aragon's Quest. Now, don't be put off by this game's kind of cutesy graphics, because the graphics on it are a little bit cutesy, but the game itself is absolutely fantastic. It's one of the best Lord of the Rings games I've played, and actually one of the few games that works better with the Wii Remote, uh, with, I keep calling it the Wii Remote, with the Move Controller. 
than it does with the controller. You can also play co-op on it um, if you've got um, you're playing on the move controller and someone else can jump in with the other controller and play as Gandalf. So one of you is Aragorn, one of you is Gandalf, and you go through this kind of uh, adventure together. And it's uh, really good. And um, even if you haven't got the move, it's still worth picking up. It's a really decent kind of um, um, game. I believe it also came out on the Wii and the um, PlayStation 2. Obviously, there's no motion control on the PlayStation 2 version. But yeah, it's a good game. Um, I picked up the Shoot, another PlayStation Move game. This is really interesting. It's kind of um, all different movie uh, sets. Uh, so there's like a Western theme or a sci fi theme, and it's basically a shooter. It's a, an on rail shooter, but um, on all different, sort of based in Hollywood and all different classic movie sets. Um, you can't have a shooting game or a shooting peripheral and not have one of these games. And um, I actually haven't played this one before, uh, so I was made up to get it. I was going to get it originally on the Wii, but I never got around to it. Uh, so I picked it up on the Move, and it's brilliant. And you can play this in 3D, and it looks uh, great as well if you've got 3D television. And that's House of the Dead Overkill. And, um, yeah, really good, but... No, no, no good for kids. As you can see, it's an 18. It's pretty graphic in places, um, but really nice. The graphics are really nice in it. So, a lot of swearing in it, though. Um, big fan of this series, and this is one of the main reasons that I bought um, the, the kind of rest of the move stuff, the like nunchuck control. Um, and that was made up when I got the gun because I wanted to play this game for a while, and that is Time Crisis. Uh, what's it called? Raising Storm. Um, this is really good. It's good value for money. This game. It's actually got three games on it. You get Time Crisis, Raising Storm. You get Time Crisis Four, which was a release on its own anyway, and also Dead Storm Pirates, which is like an arcade shooter that came out in the arcades. And you get all three games in this package. Um, Raising Storm is really interesting because it plays like a first-person shooter and a light gun thrown together. Whereas Time Crisis 4 is just another Time Crisis game, uh, better graphics, but it's an on-rail shooter. Um, Raising Storm isn't isn't particularly on-rails, you actually control the movement of the character as well. So, um, yeah, it's kind of an interesting mix of genres, if you like. I also picked up Ruse. Um, simply, this was like £1.50 or something. Which is a strategy game that you can control with the PlayStation Move. I haven't had a go with this yet. Uh, had a go with this yet. I do remember playing this years ago on the PC, um, but I was interested to see what it would be like with the Move controller because it, apparently, by what I've heard, it's quite um, it's integrated quite heavily into this game, the Move controller. So it'd be interesting to play this with that. And the last game that uh, sort of move related that I picked up was SOCOM Special Forces. I've always liked uh, the SOCOM games and um, I hadn't played this one anyway. Uh, again, another one you can control with just non control should you wish. But um, it works really well with the move controller as well. Um, like I said, some games work really well with it and some don't. And um, this one really does work quite well. I played a little bit of Bioshock Infinite with the Move controller, and that was absolutely dreadful. It just, you know, it was it was kind of semi-playable, but not amazing. Just kind of okay. So, um, and there's been some other games. Uh, you can play Killzone Three with the Move controller, uh, Resistance Fallen Man Three, the third Resistance game. I believe you can play that with the controller. I'm just looking up there because some. And there's a couple of other games that you can use. Uh, Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, I believe that. You can use that with the, contro uh, the Move controller as well. So, yeah, a bit of a Move kind of frenzy. Up next, some more PlayStation 3 stuff. So, um, these are just random games that I picked up. Um, there's been a couple of sales on game and places like that. So, I thought I'd pick a couple of uh, cheap games up. I'm always up for a cheap game. Um... If I see something cheap, I can't help myself, I've got to buy it. So I bought... This was actually this first one was from a charity shop. Call of Duty World at War. I know it's a Platinum edition, but I didn't actually have a physical copy of this game. 
Um, this is one of my favourite World of Wars as well. Um, well. Sorry, one of my favourite Call of Duties. Um, so it's good to have it. Yeah, um, World of War. I think that was 49... No, it was 99p in the British Art Foundation. So... I got this because it was in a part of a deal that was three for two in game. I picked two games up and this was the third one. Uh, Aliens Colonial Marines. Not my favourite game. Oh, got to focus there. There you go. Not my favourite game in the world, but um, certainly worth 99p. I'm not as bad as everyone said it was. Um, it wasn't great. Um, yeah, yeah, it was bad, but it just wasn't as bad as everyone said it was. So... Um, this was an offer. I got this for 49p in game. This was probably my bargain of the month. Uh, Saints Row, the full package. Saints Row 3, sorry, the full package. This was sealed, sorry, this was sealed in game for uh, 49p. Um, so I couldn't leave it there on the shelf. It was a bargain. So, and it's a great game. And this was 2 99 I think. And that was Skate 3. Uh, which actually has held its value considerably well this game uh, it still goes for quite a bit of money um, you know if you go to places like CX and you know actually normally when you go in game it's still going for about 14 quid 12, 13, 14 pounds so I was pretty happy to pick this up for like 2.99 or something so. um, I got one game for the Amiga which is a game that I've been after getting a boxed copy of for some time. Uh, I used to play a hell of a lot of this game years ago. Um, I used to live, um, share a house with my mate, and we used to play this on his Amiga. And we spent many a night just hammering this game. And that's Speedball 2. Um, I've been after this in a boxed form for a while. I got this off a guy off Facebook, uh, Facebook group. I don't normally bother with the face book groups but this came up and I was lucky enough to get I normally miss out on stuff um, this was a fiver and it's absolutely immaculate condition um, you can see it's got the disc and the yeah, instructions in it and it works fine and yeah so and it's just one of my favorite games of all time to be ball too so brilliant really took me back when I put this back in and started playing it so I forgot how hard it was as well. I have got the uh, the remastered version on Steam, but there's just nothing quite like putting the original in and having a blast on it. So, um, another couple of games that I picked up. I picked up some PSP games. I'm always harping on about the PSP when I do these pickup videos, because simply because they're just so cheap to buy the PSP games. If you've got a PSP, now is the best time to buy the games. They're so cheap. And um, I've just got a feeling one day they're going to go up. I mean, I've just been picking these up in charity shops and things for the last couple of years. And, you know, they've just I've, I've somehow amassed uh, quite a collection. I think I've got like over 100 PSP games now. Um, and, you know, bar one, all these were like 99p. So... So another SOCOM game, SOCOM US Navy SEALs Fireteam Bravo 2. Um, I'll have to try and find the first one now. I've got this one. This was 99p from the British Art Foundation, so you can't argue with that. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. I know it's on the Essentials label, but again, it doesn't bother me as long as I've got it and it's in good condition. Sid Meier's Pirates, which is a game that I've actually never ever played. So, um, on any format. Again, 99p. All these were to a complete, um, good condition with the manuals, you know. So, can't argue about that. Um, Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. Never played it. But it was 99p. So I picked that up. Sonic Rivals 2. Used to love Sonic back in the day. Um, I haven't really played this. I don't think I've played these. So I'm going to give these a blast. I only got this one. Um, some of these yesterday. So I've not actually played them all yet. 
this was 99p. Star Wars Force Unleashed on the PSP. I don't know how it compares to its um, the full version, but um, it certainly looks. The box shots on the back are pretty good, you know. So I'm hoping it's going to be pretty good. And this last one I got from a market store. This guy, me and my wife, me and my wife went shopping, and there's a there was a market store, and this guy that sells couple of old games and stuff and um, I wouldn't say it was dead cheap but he's pretty he's, he's reasonable he's kind of normal prices and he didn't really have much in the way of PSP stuff he mainly does kind of um, you know newer stuff but he did have this and this was a fiver and um, I picked it up because one of wanted to be months into play it two I didn't have it and three or five is a good price because I think it goes for about 12, 15 quid or something online. And that is Pac-Man World 3. And who doesn't love a little bit of Pac-Man? So um, I love the PSP. Um, when I go on holiday, I generally take my PSP more than I take uh, my Vita. Um, yeah, I normally take a load of PSP games with me. Um, and we're going away in a couple of months, and so I'm going to um, I'm saving this one for my. This is going to be my holiday game, Pac-Man World Three, and maybe a couple of others. So, so they were my PSP pickups. Now we've got some uh, PlayStation Two and Xbox original games. So, um, anyone who's watches my channel uh, regularly or whatever, uh, or anyone who knows me knows that I'm quite into my music. Um, I'm especially like a bit of a rock, stroke, heavy metal fan. So I saw this and couldn't resist it. I've never even knew it existed until I saw it on the shelf. But I thought it was worth a go. It's not the greatest game in the world, but you know, uh, it's called Earache Extreme Metal Racing. I mean, you just can't leave that in the shelf if you see it, can you? And it's basically like a kart racing game, uh, not unlike Mario Kart or something like that. But. The twist is, all the cars are based around death metal bands or bands of the Earache record label. So you've got bands such as Mortis, Decapitated, Morbid Angel, Deicide. You can see where we're going with this. Yeah, it's all kind of screaming death metal. Um, so even if the game's crap, at least I got to listen to some really um, heavy tunes as I'm playing it. So yeah, not the greatest game in the world, but um, an unusual game. And a good one to have in the collection. Um, another SOCOM game. It seems to be going SOCOM. I just seem to be picking up SOCOM games this month. SOCOM 2 US Navy SEALs. Um, I do have the first one of this. And I just have never got around to buying the second one. Uh, I saw this. I think it was in CX. It was 49p. So I picked it up. Now this game... Um, I went to Wales on a day out with my um, missus and my little boy and um, I actually went to Rail and there used to be a shop in Rail that sold retro games and we drove, I drove all the way to Rail, um, it took us about an hour and a half to get there and the shop had gone, it closed down and it was selling some crappy sort of second hand clothes instead. So I was a bit gutted but I thought well, well while I'm here I'll have a look around the charity shops, there's not much in Rail. And, um, this game, I went into game, and actually, unlike most games that I've been into, this particular game still sold a couple of PlayStation 2 games and a couple of PSP games. Not many, just a handful. But just by luck, they had this game, and it was priced at a fiver. And this game, this is a game I've been after for quite a while, and I've always been. So, it's not really hard to get hold of, but it's. Um, yeah, it always goes for more than a fiver, and this was in really good condition. I mean, almost new condition. It had been extremely well looked after, uh, and this is to complete my sort of survival horror collection on the PS2. There's only one more game that I want, and that is Ruler Rose. Oh, sorry, two, Ruler Rose, and which is her terribly expensive. It goes for about a hundred quid, probably more, and the other one is Project Zero Three, which. Um, goes for about 40 quid and I'm just not going to pay 40 quid for it so uh, but I will get around to getting 
definitely Project Zero Three at some point. But this is the other game that I'd wanted, and that is Haunting Ground. Um, I've heard very, very good things about this game. If you're into like survival horror, um, Resident Evil, Silent Hill stuff like that, like I really love those type of games. This is supposed to be one of the best ones, and I've actually never played it. It's one of the ones I never got around to playing back in the day. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of uh, having a go on this. Two Xbox original games I managed to pick up. Um, both of these were cash generator jobs. Um, first one is Blood Rain 2, which is actually quite hard to find. Uh, Blood Rain 1's not. Blood Rain 1 is quite easy to find. Um, but I was after this on the Xbox because I've got Blood Rain 1 on the Xbox. And uh, I just happened to come across it in the cash converters. I think it was 199 so I grabbed it and yeah this goes for about 15 quid online if you go into you know the usual places Amazon, Ebay, whatever so to get it for 2 quid I was quite made up with and it's a really good nick and it's actually a lot better than the first game I do like the first game but I thought the controls on it were dreadful and they seem to have uh, sorted it out with this one um, it's controls pretty well and it's a nice looking game as well So, and the final Xbox original game that I picked up was Psychonauts I think this was three quid. Another game you don't see out and about that much. It's um, you know when you, it's one of the harder I'd say Xbox games to find. Um, it's a pretty well known game as well. Um, it's a bit of a cult classic. It's made by uh, Tim Schafer, who made like Dare the Tentacle, uh, Dare, Dare the Tentacle, Grim Fandango. What well, says that on the box there? Creators of Grim Fandango, Dare, Dare the Tentacle. Um, and what's the other one he did with Jack Black in it? Oh, I forgot what it's called. Oh, God, what's that game called? Anyway, I can't remember. Yeah, he made that one as well. So, yeah, Psychonauts. This is a really good game. Really good platformer. Really dark as well. So, yeah, that's kind of my um, PS2 Xbox original pickups. So finally we come to the more modern stuff, um, current gen if you like, pickups that I've uh, got. And I haven't really got that much over the last um, couple of weeks really. Uh, there's a couple of games that I'm holding fire on until they go down. I was quite interested in getting um, Quantum Break but I'm not paying like 50 quid for it because um, it's a single player only game and... Let's face it, it's probably only going to last about 10 hours. So I'll wait till that goes down to like a 10. It's like The Order. I've been dying to play The Order since it came out. Even though I had the reviews for it were terrible and it was really short. But I refuse to pay more than like a fiver for it because of that. Uh, so I still haven't played it. So, um, so one sort of is it last gen game I got. This was in Granger Games. It was a pound. I do believe it's still a pound if you want to pick it up. Uh, they had loads of them in. Uh, Metal Gear Rising. It's one of the few Metal Gear games that I don't own. Um, the only other one I don't own is um, Acid 2 on the PSP. Oh, and Portable. Actually, I might have Portable. I don't know if I've got Portable Ops. Um, um, yeah, it's probably not one of the best like Metal Gear games, but you know, for a pound you can't go wrong. So, and it's made by Platinum. You know, who made like. Bayonetta and everything, so brilliant game. Um, and another game I picked up was this was for the Wii U. Um, was Splinter Cell Blacklist. Now I do already have this. I've got the um, collector's edition with the statue, uh, the um, Fisher, what's his name, Sam Fisher statue, on the 360. But I've never opened it because I already had it on the PC. I had it on Steam. And then I wanted the statue, so I bought the collector's edition, but I've never opened it, so it's still sealed in the box. And I did want uh, a copy of that I could just play on console. And these, uh, I don't know if CEX have kind of been given some old stock or something, because I've been in about three or four CEXs, and they've all got piles of this game in. Uh, so this was £6. Uh, and I love this game. And uh, it's got a couple of Wii-specific features, not many. I think if you're flying a drone, you can use the second screen as the screen of the drone. It's one of the few Ubisoft sales as well, Ubisoft titles, that they bothered to release the DLC for on the Wii. So the add-on pack you can get for this, which I think includes two extra levels, 
uh, is actually on the way. Yeah, so uh, I really I've been meaning to have another playthrough of this game for ages, uh, and now I've got it on the way. I probably will um, have another go on it. So now we get to our current gen stuff. Um, another bargain if you like of the month and probably two one was that other game that I mentioned before that I've forgotten about now and this one uh, this was in cash generated for 2 99 I don't know if it had been put out the wrong price or I was just lucky um, I know you can pick it up for about a tenner now and that is Gears of War Ultimate Edition now I wasn't the biggest fan of Gears of War when it first came out I did play it but I never finished it um, I thought it was a great looking game, but I, I got a bit bored, to be honest of it, kind of all that cover shooting. But I saw this for, um, was it 2 99 or 3 99 or whatever it was, I can't remember. I know it was well under a 5 that I picked this up for. And it was like, um, I thought, go on then. Uh, plus I was told that apparently they'd done a really good job of this um, with the graphics. And it does, you've got, it is an absolutely stunning looking game on the xbox one they've done a really good job of it um and i've started playing it again and i'm actually really enjoying it this time for some bizarre reason i don't know why it's not because of the graphics because at the time it came out originally it looked amazing for the time um but yeah i've just really enjoying it so go figure but yeah gears of war that doesn't mean i'll probably go out and buy the new one though i don't know i played a little bit of gears of war judgment and i didn't really like it uh, another game I got, I simply got this, I had some credit on my CX, uh, and a CX voucher with some credit on, didn't know how to spend it, so I picked this up, I heard good things about it, like I've got time to play another RPG, no, but I will get around to playing this, and that is Dragon Age Inquisition, I did play the first Dragon Age and really enjoyed it, I never played the second one, um, I just never got around to it, I have got it, I've got it on PC, I just never got around to um playing it so yeah but um dragon age inquisition i have played first couple of hours of this and it was pretty engaging so yeah i need to uh, get back into it at some point uh two more games uh the next one is a game that i only picked up yesterday was it yesterday and um it's brilliant that's all i can say and that is dark souls 3 and I got it in this nice little tin as well. I'll just take that off. So you can see the really nice kind of embossed tin. And it comes with like a little strategy guide. Like, well, like a starter guide. And also a soundtrack CD in case you want to listen to the music of Dark Souls. But yeah, Dark Souls 3. Well... I've got, kind of got a bit of confession to make. I've never ever played the original Dark Souls. And I never played Demon Souls. So you're probably thinking, well, why did you buy Dark Souls 3? Well, I did play a little bit of Dark Souls 2. Um, and I didn't like it. I played it for about two days and I traded it in. I just thought it was a bit of a mess. I found it quite buggy in places. I got lost too easily in the game. I got killed too many times in the game. And I didn't... I just didn't like the game that much. Um, but I'd read the reviews for this. This is a great reviews. I thought it was a beautiful looking game. And after playing Bloodborne. And absolutely loving Bloodborne. And thinking it was absolutely brilliant. I wanted to give this a go. And it hasn't disappointed. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I have done... a sort of a gameplay vid on this check out my video i'll put a link up um which side i'll put a link up here somewhere up here it's hard to do this when you're on camera what am i pointing at yeah yeah i'll put a link up here that's it uh to that video which is me getting my ass kicked on it uh but it's fun and i'm doing a lot better in this game than um i certainly a lot better than i did in dark souls 2 and probably a little bit better than i did in bloodborne as well so, which I'm still kind of halfway through or something. Um, I've still never finished that game. It's massive. Um, but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I uh, highly recommend it. One of the best games um, I've played on the PS4. Um, or Xbox One. Whatever you get it on. And uh, yeah, one more game to go. And I did want to talk about this next game a little bit. 
I know quite a few people have picked this game up. Um, I picked this up. Now this isn't the sort of game I normally play. Uh, and I got this because it was on offer in Granger Games and um, Life is Strange, yeah. Now, this is a funny one, this. This is not the sort of game that I would usually play. This is kind of in the vein of a, like a story-based game, very much like in the vein of Walking Dead. Um, but I played The Walking Dead, The Telltale. I played a couple of the, tried to play a couple of the Telltale games and I just couldn't get into them. I don't know why, if it's the style of them or so. I just, I tried The Walking Dead and I played the first episode and by the time I kind of got midway through the second episode, I just didn't care anymore. I was, I just got kind of bored by it. I don't know if it was the gameplay or whatever. But this game has really surprised me because I bought this thinking, it's going to sound weird, but I bought it thinking I probably wouldn't like it. But I'd heard so, much good, so many good things about it. People saying it was amazing, it was really good. If anyone who doesn't know what it's about, you play this girl here, it's called Max, and she finds out she can rewind time. And then you've got to go through her story. Um, obviously something happens where she is, the town she lives in, and you've got to go through the story. And you have the power of rewinding time at certain points within the story and changing the story. And it's really interesting. But what I really like about it is the story in it. Unlike the Walking Dead one, which I actually found a little bit dull and a little bit... It dragged, I found the game dragged, this one doesn't, it totally engaged me from the minute I started playing it, um, to the point is when I um, started playing it the other day, I played right through the first episode in one sitting, um, I started playing the second episode yesterday, and the only reason I stopped playing it is because I looked at the clock and it was like one o'clock in the morning, I thought I'd better go to bed, um, really, really, really good game, I'm really enjoying it. And not because of the gameplay or because of well, the graphics, because it's just got a really engaging story and really engaging narrative to it. And the characters are so interesting in it. And um, yeah, it's like a playable film, I'd say. You know, it's near as you're going to get to a playable film. Um, it's much better than Heavy Rain. Um, and even uh, Beyond Two Souls, which I enjoyed. A lot of people slag that off, but I quite enjoyed that game. Um, it's even better than that so yeah totally recommend picking up this game it's really really good and a little bit different and that's about it that's my kind of pickups number 13 so um, please uh, leave your comments below and uh, give me a like and subscribe to the channel um, nearly up to 100 subscribers not that i'm obsessed with my subscriber count or anything but it's always nice to see people watching the channel and interacting with people when you get the chance and um just want to say thanks for watching um people who've been watching the channel and paying attention and thanks to all my new subscribers and i'd also like to give a shout out to woodland 37 who was good enough to mention my channel on his video um Cheers, mate. Um, if I bump into you at play, I shall buy you a beer. Um, or a Coke, because I'll probably be driving. So, maybe not. Anyway. So, yeah. Anyway, that's it for this week. So, take care. And I shall see you all soon with another dodgy video. Alright, thanks a lot. Bye.